and I'll come back over here. I'm going to set up an endpoint and an outpoint. I'll go ahead and make a subclip. Let's set up another in and an out. I'll make another subclip. A couple more ins and outs. Make a subclip. And if you're not familiar with what subclips are, they basically allow me to take, in this particular example, I have one chapter I'm working with, and I just want to just create a whole bunch of smaller clips based on the larger clip. It just allows me to work with multiple clips off of the same clip. Now all I can do is select all these and drag these directly to my timeline. And by the way, it doesn't make a difference if I, if I reorder these. Um, so long as you have a fast DVD drive in there, you can just edit these things directly um, off of your, uh, your video. I'm going to go ahead down here and just mute this audio for a second since it's kind of loud. And then I'll just go ahead and hit play. It's reading the DVD, switching between clips, um, no problem. You can feel free to go in here and edit these clips as much as you'd like. Um, you know, moving moving pieces of video around. It really doesn't make any difference. Uh, the performance, I have to say, on this uh, surprised me on how uh, how good it is. Um, it's it's amazing that we can edit. Um, directly off of the DVD and have this kind of performance. One of the things you want to watch out for is if you need to use a number of different DVDs, again I'm using my uh, my friend Nigel Hook's DVD here, um, but he's got a bunch of DVDs and if I wanted to go ahead and uh, add DVD 2007 or 2009, at this point I can't eject this DVD because it's being used in my project by Premiere Pro. So this could uh, present a problem. So how do I get around that? The easiest way to get around that is to look at which chapter you're using or which number of the VTS file you're using on the VOB. I see that I'm using chapter four. I'm gonna minimize Premiere Pro, go over to my DVD, put this in list, go find the file that I'm using, which happens to be this one here, and then I can just transfer that to my hard drive, and you'll see I'm only having to transfer 129 megs rather than maybe eight gigs or four gigs worth of information. So it's a great way to figure out what parts of the DVD that you wanna use. Now, by the way, if you wanna use the whole DVD, then all you have to do is just transfer this entire folder over to your hard drive and you're all set. Uh, I myself like the fact that I can sort of preview this DVD directly in Premiere, start to play around with it, and figure out exactly what it is that I need to do with the DVD. So again, I think for legacy projects, this is going to be huge. Again, if it's the only footage that you have available, you don't have to worry with uh, D to A firewire converters or any of these other things you've had to do in the past. This is one of my favorite features in Premiere 4.1. Another new feature that we've added to Premiere Pro is the ability to export to frame a lot easier. One of the number one questions I get on a monthly basis is what happened to file export frame with Premiere Pro CS4. So what we've done in the 4.1 is giving you an easier way to export the frames in Premiere Pro CS4. If you find the frame that you're looking for, now all you have to do is go File, Export, Media. From the drop-down list, you now can choose either TIFF or Targa. So I'll just choose Targa in this example. Go ahead and choose where you'd like to place it. I'm going to stick it on my desktop and just hit save and that's it. And now you'll notice that your Targa file is now saved to the desktop. For those of you working with longer projects, Premiere Pro 4.1 now parses the project file a lot faster now. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and close out this project and open up another project that I have on my hard drive. So projects that have lots of clips now open up a lot faster. So for those of you that were waiting three, four, five, ten minutes for large projects to open, you'll be pleasantly surprised with Premiere Pro 4.1's ability to open up large projects. 
Let's take a quick look at what's changed in the red workflow for Premiere Pro 4.1. I also need to point out that you need to be using the new red plugin that works with Premiere Pro 4.1 and After Effects 902 in order to see the changes which I'm going to show you here because the workflow has changed quite significantly since the original release of the red plugin for Adobe Premiere Pro CS4. And I'm going to go through these steps fairly quickly. So if you want to get more detail on the red workflow, there is a separate video for Premiere Pro 4.1 and After Effects 902 with the new red plugin. So from my media browser, I'm going to go ahead and jump into my red folder. And the first thing you'll notice is that the view window now shows you red files. And again, when the red files show up here, you know that all these clips are spanned accordingly. So again, you get a new red logo. You can just drag and drop. I'll take one of these 4K clips and drag it and drop it right into my 2K timeline. All I need to do to resize this 4K clip is to select scale to frame size. That will now resize this video at 2K. A lot easier workflow. And the same thing goes for 4K video if you need to resize video there. Um, as well. So much, much easier workflow. Now to match that workflow, you also have new settings in the program panel here and the source panel. You'll notice if you put your mouse over the program panel and right mouse click under display resolution, you'll now get full resolution down to 16th resolution. I happen to know that 2K on my laptop plays back great at quarter resolution and I can play this back in real time. Now, if I happen to be on a desktop, I know that I can play back 2K at full resolution on my 8-core desktop and 4K at half resolution. The advantage of having these resolutions right at your fingertips is I don't have to restart Premiere and create different sequences. I can just bounce back and forth. For example, if I wanted to go to my 4K timeline and play this back in real time, I know that I have to set this back at 8th resolution in order to play that back at real time. Again, that's just a working resolution. The picture quality still looks great, so I can just play this right back at 4K on my timeline. And again, if I just wanted to go back and double check my settings, I could just go back to my 2K timeline and say I can play that back at quarter resolution and get a much, much sharper picture up here. Again, the same thing goes when I load a clip into my source window. If I double click in my source window, I want to make sure that I take this 4K clip and set it to 8th resolution. That way I know it'll play back perfectly. And again, if you get any uh, stuttering, you can go back in and change that resolution. Typically, when you have a 4K file and you're trying to play that back a quarter resolution on this particular laptop that I'm using, which is a Core 2 Duo, it might start to stutter. So if it starts to stutter, just pop it down. And again, I find that most laptops will play back at eighth resolution. Most desktops will play back at quarter resolution. And eight cores will play back at half resolution, again, for 4K or full resolution for 2K files. Let me show you another great change to the red plugin, and that's under the source settings window. I'm going to go ahead and resize my timeline here. And I'm going to right mouse click on this 2K clip and go to source settings. What you'll see is you'll see the new red source settings window, which essentially will give you all of the settings that you may have seen in other red workflows. So you've got decoding, white balance, and color settings. I can go down and change the color space from red space to rec 709. Maybe I'm uh, taking a look at uh, doing some work in After Effects and I want to sort of match my color space. I can come over here and I might try to cool this down a bit. Maybe turn it on, uh, just bring the Kelvin down and cool that down a bit. I'm going to up the saturation. Let me just, I'll just slide this up a bit here. So she comes out of the pool there. There she goes. And now I'm going to go ahead and just sort of turn on the red. So I'm, I'm working with the red curve here. And I'm just trying to overdo this a bit so it's easy to see on this web video. And when I click OK, you're going to notice that the change happens immediately. The reason is, is because we're actually doing this pre-processing. We're doing this before Premiere Pro sees a 